Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dress Casual, a.k.a. the reunion show for the Just Be a Dad podcast. We are here on Father's Day Eve, and I'm thrilled to have with me TJ in the house and Nate. We are all, of course, formerly of the Just Be a Dad podcast, and we have come together for all of you. This is much awaited, fellas. I don't know if you know this. Rapid Dave was just talking recently on the most I hate to use that term recent again after I just said recent, but on the most recent episode of Strikeout Beer, he said, ah, I can't wait for those guys to do. I would just wish they could get together again and just one time. And well, you know what, Rapid Dave, you're getting your wish today. I called up the boys and I said, well, let's be fair. I texted them. Nobody calls anymore. But I said, guys, we need to get together. It's Father's Day coming up on Sunday. Let's do a show Saturday. And without hesitation, they both said, apps up friggin literally. What's going on, guys? Good to see you guys again. <clears throat> Nothing. Work. Stress. You know, same old, same old. Dad life. That's what's going dad on. Life. Dad life. Absolutely dad life. So we're going to get into a lot of fun things today. Obviously, we have some lists to go over, you know, like great Father's Day movies. Uh, top, You know, I've got the uh, celebrities over 50 who are dads. I've got famous dads in history. I've got non-famous dads in history. You know, we've got some trivia questions and whatnot. We've got stories to tell. We've got shenanigans to get into. But first, um, you know, uh, we got some comments here. Let's read the comments. Bam! Dylan Moran in the house. Thank you for joining us. We got that dad life. Dylan Moran, a big supporter of Dress Casual and the Just Be a Dad podcast. Thank you so much for being in the house. We're going to have a great episode today. Um, guys, I know we've probably talked about this before on Just Be a Dad, but it's been a while. You know, it's been a long time. We probably even talked about it on our last uh, Father's Day episode. But just for the, the for the people watching, for the people listening, you know, we're going to get a little deep already. Let's talk about the father figures in our lives, even if, even if it's not our own biological fathers. And I know we each have our own stories when it comes to that. But uh, let's talk about the father figures in our lives. And Nate, why don't you get us kicked off with who... Some of the men, even if it's not just one guy, who do you consider some prominent father figures in your life and how did they affect your youth? Probably my dad and my uncles, really. Because they were shit, they were there all, all the time teaching us. The only thing they didn't teach us is empathy. It's the one thing I that's the one thing I do have a complaint about. Um, Which comes it, it not to be, you know, it does come across when talking to you, uh, I'm gonna say. <laughs> no, it it, it it is and and you know. Cause you know, growing up, you know how the old school men teach the boys is, you know, don't show emotion, don't do this, don't do that. So it's it once you get into the real world, you realize like that's not how life is. Like you have to, you have to have some form of empathy. Uh, it's that's probably one of the hardest things that I had to learn, like as a dad, especially to a daughter, is is empathy and. Especially like if she, you know, she, you know, she gets emotional. I don't understand emotions. Like, why are you crying? You crying because you're, you don't, your chicken nuggets are right, or it just she cries sometimes for just because. And I'm like, oh, what the fuck are you crying for? But that's just how girls are. And that's just one. Again, that's one thing that the hardest thing I had to learn is that is empathy. And women are very emotional, and you just have to be patient with them. Did you grow up around a lot of women? Like, do you have a lot of aunts? Unfortunately, yeah. Like my entire family is made of women. Like my <laughs> my grandma, she had nine kids, seven girls and two boys. <laughs> and then they went on to have girls. And then those girls had girls. Some of them had boys, but our family is majority females, right? Um, because even the guys, even even her sons had daughters. So it's majority women in his family, and none of these women know empathy. I'm just gonna be honest with you. None of them no empathy. My, my mom didn't. It's, just, it's 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 a it, it's a long it's a long list of people who didn't teach us empathy, especially as boys. So um. So would you say that's even the women in your family are kind of like absolutely. more show emotion, more even yeah. masculine, maybe? I mean, they show emotion. They just don't show the correct ones. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they it it it. Like having to learn to be, you know, be show empathy and showing how to care about another one's feelings. It's it was something extremely difficult to learn, especially as an adult. 
What are some of the best things they taught you? Huh? What are some <laughs> of that? <laughs> your dad and your uncles. What are some of the the best things you'd say that they passed? I mean, just how to just how to be a decent human being. My dad obviously teach me how to be a good a father. decent a decent but non empathetic human being. Yeah, you know, my dad, you know, he taught me he instilled the correct values into me and to being a good father, basically. Um. Other than that, that's really about it. I mean, everything else I had to learn on my own, which, you know, it's normal. It comes with life. You got to learn. There's certain things your parents are still in you, then the rest you got to learn on your own. Are there any, did you take out, like, because of that, because you felt alone sometimes, are there any father figures maybe from, like, um, the culture that you took on? Like, any comic book heroes, anybody on TV or the movies? You kind of were like, okay, this is someone I can look up to? Shaq, maybe. Yeah? Well, other than that, no. There's this none that's worth talking about. You looked up to Shaq when you were a kid? Absolutely. Shaq was yeah. my favorite basketball player. Isn't he, like, famously a, a huh? cheater? He what now? Doesn't he, like, famously a cheater? I don't know about all that. That's Kevin Durant. Or not Kevin Durant. Kev, uh, I think Shaq, like, has a, an apartment for his mistress. I don't, I don't entertain – I don't entertain in that, so – when I when I saw Shaq, I just saw basketball. Okay, but no one you saw is like I'm gonna use him as a role model. Mm, no, not no, nah, not really. Most of like I said, most of the stuff I learned, I learned them all. It's just learn. It's trial and error at that point. Now, TJ, I know you and your grandpa were very close. Yes, sir. What's that been like? You know, I mean, what what's what's that whole? I mean, what what's the I don't want to say this. <laughs> don't be complete. Don't be politically correct now. It's too late for that, especially this show. Feel free to speak on your grandfather and your relationship with him. And then maybe um, since he's passed away, have you found, have you looked at anyone else for that type of father figure? Have you, have you just find out, had to find it in yourself? Um, well, my great grandfather, I, I assume is this probably who you're talking to. Cause that's who I was closest with uh, past when I was 16, 17, that ballpark. And, you know, he he taught me a lot more than people think. A lot of people are like, oh, he just spoiled you and he didn't ever teach anything. He did. Um, I, I've got it back here and I don't know if anybody can see it. It says don't give up. Um, and that was one thing he really pushed for me growing up was whatever you do, don't give up. Keep fighting. Just keep going. Um, and, you know, when he passed away, it put me in a really dark period in my life. And my grandfather now, his son, um, stepped up to the plate in a huge way. I mean, he was already helping take care of me, but he stepped up and it's funny because people now they they look at my grandfather that I'm close with now and they look at me and they were like, you sure that's your grandfather, not your dad? Cause y'all act similar. You're both loud. You're both deaf as hell. And, um, you know, he was, he taught me no matter what, at the end of the day, family is always first. Um, he's not always going to, be the most polite or politically correct or say what you want to hear, but he's going to tell you the truth. And sometimes it's harsh. It's, it's that tough love, you know, it's, it's a hey, dumbass straighten up and do the right thing. Um, and I've kind of, I kind of took that and I rolled with what my great grandfather taught me and what my grandfather now is teaching me. And that I I'd like to say, that's a huge reason of why I am the way I am. I mean, like you said earlier, we all have a story. My own father never, set the bar very high as far as being a dad. Right. So, um, I, I knew as a kid growing up and as a teenager in my young adult years, I mean, I was a dad at 19 years old and I knew that I wanted to be a good dad. I wanted to make sure that my kids knew I loved them and I was going to be there for them no matter what. Now, can I make every baseball game, every cheerleading game, every, uh, competition choir? No, I can't, but I want them to know it's not because I don't want to be there. It's just because other things in life kind of have to take priority work, you know, family emergencies, what have you, but they are always a top priority for me always, no matter what. Now your relationship with your own father, your biological father, did that ever turn you off from being a dad yourself? Did you ever think I don't want to be like him? Um, I, I knew that I didn't want to be like him as far as being a, a, a father figure went. Um, 
I'm not going to say he didn't love me because I'm sure in his own weird way, he probably did, but I knew he wasn't there for me in the way that I wanted him to be there. I, I wanted, you know, that I wanted what every kid wants at that age, you know, nine, 10, 11 years old. I wanted a dad to be around to teach me how to play catch or teach me how to work on cars or yell at me when I'm not holding the flashlight. Right. You know, that type of thing. Um, but it, I think it just motivated me more to want to be a better dad. I mean, by the time I graduated high school, um, I, I, I was ready to, to be a father. I was like, I want to be a dad. I want to have 10 kids. And, um, you know, I, I want to, to be a good father. So, I mean, that's, you know, uh, I, I said it before when we were on just be a dad, that was what my kids were my motivating factor for the podcast because you had so many dads, our generation is a generation guys in their thirties and even early forties. A lot of those kids grew up without a dad or without a father figure. And they had to learn how to be a dad on their own. Some of them are great at it. Some not so much, but regardless, I wanted to kind of have a show showing what to do as far as how to be a dad, you know, and how to joke around and, how to have that, you know, place where you could come and talk about what the hell's going on. I mean, Dylan, you're, you know, you were a new dad coming in and Nate had been a dad for what, eight, nine years, something like that. I what? Mean, you were a dad for like eight, nine years when we started the show, right? My daughter's seven, you dick. Okay. Excuse me. Six or seven I've years. Had, I was off by like two years. I've had years to my life. Nate, you got about six kids, don't you? No, I got one. <laughs> I've had years of my life. Oh man, so and this is why we did the show. By the way, I gotta throw in it wouldn't be just be a dad reunion without us starting the show 15 minutes late. I'm just gonna throw that out there, <laughs> Nate. But you know, first of all, no, 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 no. Here's where I'll interject on that one. <laughs> it wouldn't be a just be a dad reunion if you didn't have some sort of technical difficulty before we're starting the show. And then you're like, oh, I can't remember my password for this. Ah. <laughs> hey, I set up all that last night. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to be ready. And But, hey, I still got, you know, how many years uh, Nate had been a dad wrong. So there's that. Now, you guys, if I remember, did, was, you, start the, was, did was, you start the podcast during the pandemic or was it before that? No, it was, I, I think it was during. Yeah. Okay. It was like, uh, I want to say... The summertime i want to say it was around yeah around, it was it was the like summertime. summertime of 2020 and uh fun <clears> fact <throat> for those that don't know because i was looking at it last night our last show was during uh father's day it was the week before the week of father's day fitting so here we are yeah I, I knew this is i'm so glad you guys agreed to do the show again because it's perfect time to do it and uh, I knew it'd be great. What uh, did you guys talk about? Like when you were at work together, did you talk about dad stuff a lot or was it mostly? Uh, just no. <laughs> Half the shit we talked about was TJ's bullshit. So at the time, so when I first, so when, so I was on my way out when I first started working with TJ. So I was on my way. I was getting ready to leave the fucking company anyway, because this company is bullshit. So i had been there for maybe two months maybe give or take um and i think i find i think it was like close to around the last my last few my last month or so and then i got paired with tj and then everything like first day tj he had a black eye so that's the first question i'm like what the fuck happened to your face and he proceeded to tell me he got into a fight with some bikers i'm like cool so i guess this is who i'm riding with okay and, good. at least he fought white people and then so and then i think this is around the time he was going through his divorce or i think at that time you were going through your divorce so I was that's just, we were just separated yeah yeah so we didn't talk about any dad stuff most of it's about tj's drama uh so you were both just hating on women all day every day i was still married at the time okay so it was kind of like a whole reverse I, I actually just i had just got married no I was yeah. I was a couple months from getting married. I was a couple a couple months from my wedding. Cause I I got there in 2016, like December sometime, 
And then my wedding was in April of 2017. Did you... No, because those okay. So those before you had to do any type of restrictions, huh? You you that okay? I was just gonna think. I was thinking like pandemic wise, but that was years before that. Yeah, right. we yeah. This is years. Yeah, years before that. Yeah. So then, so after I left, well, we thought, I mean, you get married we, during the Trump years. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't talk for two years, almost. Almost, years. and then you either found me on Facebook or I found I don't you. Know how it happened. Yeah, it, it just happened, and then like we just started talking, and then. He he came up with the idea, and then he just pitched it to me. I was like, "Shit, sure, why not?" Especially because we were at home and we had shit else to do. So, and you both are already gamers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> now, did you did either of you have like podcasting equipment at the time, or you had to start up from the scratch with that? We start. I started off from scratch. I, uh, you know, that was uh, I found strikeout beer and rapid Dave streams. I found all that during the pandemic and I was bugging the hell out of rapid Dave. I was like, what do I need? What, you know, how do I get started? And he kept telling me the same thing over and over. He was like, dude, all you need is a phone. That's it. That's it. You need, you need a phone and stream yard and you, you, you've got everything you need. But I, I refused to take that as an answer. Um, so I went out and I bought me a laptop, which I, all the equipment that I'm using right now is what I, I started out with. But I got me a little just basic laptop uh, um, and I got me a soundboard. I got me a microphone. I got all that stuff. Um, and I bought it little by little, bought, you know, something every couple of weeks. And when I was finally ready, Nate came over. We did the first couple of shows here. I think it was like the first five shows, maybe three, like that, yeah. three, four, five shows here. And then we started doing them remotely. Nate would be at his house. I would be here. And, you know, and then it wasn't soon after that, uh, Dylan, that's when you joined us, but, um, no, man, it just, I rapid Dave helped me in a lot of ways. Um, uh, and like I said, he kept telling me what I just, I, I just need a phone. I was like, no, I, I, I want to do it the right way. I want a microphone. I want this. There is no right way. It's just, just start, just do it. Everybody's got a podcast now. So just do it. Yeah. Cause I already had, I already had all my computer stuff. Like I had already built my PC and everything. So and I think, I think I just had I had had the camera too, because I was streaming before that. So, <clears throat> so it didn't take much for me to get anything. Now, uh, Dylan, I'm not going to let you escape. I'm going to ask you the same question you've asked us. Um, your dad was he uh, was he a big influence in your life? Was he? what made you want to be a good dad or how, how did all that come about? Yeah. Uh, my parents were together for my youth. I, I always forget exactly how old I was when they split up, but yeah, I, I have a good relationship with my dad. Um, he has a previous wife and four kids before my sister and I. So it's, it's just, it's just one of those situations where, um, you know, it just takes a lot. It takes a it, giving all your attention to one kid. We can all agree is, is a lot of work, right? So spreading that among six kids is a lot. And you always wish you had more time and you wish you had more of your dad's attention and things like that. Um, but no, I, I, have a, I have a good relationship with my dad. It was typical um, custody was like I hung out with him basically every weekend type stuff. And I was with my mom during the week. <clears throat> well, I shouldn't even say weekend. It was really Friday, Saturday. But yeah, it started off um, yeah, as probably the most Chinese food I've ever eaten in my life, you know, because we would go to Chinese buffet every Friday when I was just a fat little kid. And it probably explains a lot of my just straight up love for Chinese buffet to this day. But uh, another big influence in my life, father figure eyes, was um, one of my uncles, my uncle Brian. I stayed at my aunt and uncle's house a lot and he's just you know big time joker big time farmer big time um you know he's he went cold turkey a few years ago after a bad accident but he used to be a big time drinker so i think a lot of those things um play a role in who i am today as far as being like a joker and a little bit extroverted and just the things that i enjoy and the way that i think and uh, yeah, my, my dad is actually, for the longest time, for decades, he 
practice karate and he was a he was a teacher of karate i know we probably talked about this um he taught karate at the local ymca where i'm from and throughout my whole childhood i never took the class until i was in my 20s i finally decided to take the class and um i think i entered the the national tournament that they have it's called the taikai in new jersey either that same year or the next year and i ended up doing pretty well and that's probably my favorite memory of i have of my dad and i because i just felt like something that we truly shared together and it was work that we put in together it was a lot of time that we spent together and there's a lot of bonding so that's definitely one of my favorite memories that i have with him is just competing in the, the karate and truly seeing you know him being proud of me in the moment and um yeah that was a really great time i'm i'm glad i did that still now where did you get your mustache from he always had a mustache. He's always rocked um, more of a goatee. I remember he would look kind of creepy when he shaved it to just a mustache. And then my uncle, who um, he was in law enforcement for a long time, he always rocked a pretty thick mustache. And I just think in general, it seems to be coming back. Like when you look at a lot of celebrities now, they're shaving down to just a mustache. So I, I think it's just one of those trends that's what's old is new again type of thing. I don't know. Where'd you get your beard? Uh, I got tired of shaving. Uh, I, I was always in, you know, corrections or some type of law enforcement or security or something. And it was one of those things where you had to shave, you had to shave. And then the place we were working at Dunbar, they, uh, they finally lifted the, the no shave clause. And I was like, <laughs> game on. And I haven't shaved since I haven't looked back. So Nate, yep. how old is Kenzie again? She'll be eight this year eight this year yes were you two planning on having a daughter Fuck no no not at all how long, no you, how long have you been with kelsey when um she got pregnant when you got her pregnant i should say um probably about four years okay yeah. Were you so, uh, practicing safe sex or are you kind of just uh, doing the old pull out? Just winging it, you know, winging it, you know. See what but happens. you were surprised. Was I surprised? No. Listen, you got to be a complete dumbass to be surprised to have that, oh, baby popped up. Listen, okay? You, you can't have unprotected sex. And what do you think? The fucking TV's coming out of there? No. You can't be fucking surprised. So, no. Was I surprised? No. No, 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 not at all. And that's, that's what bothers me the most about people. Like, you can't be surprised that she got pregnant and you're you, 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 you're road dogging it. You, you, what are you doing? You, you, what do you expect is going? What do you think is going to happen? Oh, I'm on birth control. Yeah, bitch, okay, here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to wrap up two more times just to be on the safe side. No, you can't do it. And then if you get upset when she gets pregnant, that's stupid. How did you, how did you guys decide on the name Kenzie? It took a while. We went through we read we went through a bunch of baby books. It, it took a while. Um I think I think her mom just I think her mom liked it. We just saw it. We didn't want to spell it the way most people spell it. So we went with the M C K version and not the M A C K version. Cause I think that version's stupid. What was the first name you wanted? Uh, Optimus I, I basically I basically said no name that Oprah. We can't name, can't can't give her name any of my exes had. So, <laughs> so that's a big rule. That's a big one. So, um, honestly, I, I don't. I couldn't. I couldn't even tell you how that process went. I just know we went through a lot of baby books, and then I think we came up on that name. I think there was a, a couple, a few other names, but I think we we went, we chose that one. I think her mom liked that one, and then I think her sister did too. So. TJ, how long had you been with Sam before you knocked her up? Uh, well, he didn't. I didn't knock up Sam, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, it's yeah. Ex-wife. Ex-wife. Uh, my ex-wife and I, uh, we had been together very long, honestly. I was an 18-year-old kid, kind of living my here's life. What I'll say. Here's, a, here's how I'll save myself on that one. You and all your children's bonds are so strong. It just seems like it's right. You guys have all your children together. Good save. Good save, Dylan. Uh, no, uh, we hadn't been together very long. I, I 
I couldn't even tell you the timeline, honestly. Um, and I know uh, when she told me, I was shocked to say the least, and I shouldn't have been, but I was. Um, but at the same time, I was ex- I was scared. I was excited. I was a lot of things. Um, and you know, nine months later, poof, here she was. We had we had a baby girl. Um, as far as the name goes, I don't really have a straight answer for you. Uh, I was listening to songs and anything that would pop up, and I was really big into the country music scene back then. Surprise, surprise, I know. Your um, ex wouldn't let you name her Roger Krieger, of course. It's Krieger, and no, she wouldn't. Um, <laughs> That's how much you love that guy. He'll defend his last name. <laughs> well, it, fun fact, if you want to talk about him for a second, he was a dad of 50. So, Hey, we'll bring that up. Uh, but, um, I don't even, I honestly, I can't remember now how, how we came up with the name Sam, uh, Samantha Beth, but I knew her middle name. I wanted it to be Beth because my great grandmother's middle name was Beth. She was Anna Beth. And I was like, what goes good with Beth? So I kind of just started rolling through and trying to pick a name and Samantha just stuck out one day. Uh, yeah, actually I take that back. I do remember now, uh, I was listening to Garth Brooks as bad as that sounds that's what i was listening to and it was uh what's what's up? Christine's, huh? yeah it was uh what was the name of that or song Colin, Colin baton rouge is the name of the song and he says uh, toward the end of it he says hello samantha dear i hope you're doing fine and i went samantha beth i actually like that let's go with that you know and that's that's kind of how we ended up with the name so so oh, Samantha got her name from a freaking Garth Brooks song. How corny is that? Right? I know. I'm 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 a horrible parent. Horrible. The horniest of all gnomes, the Mr. Booze Cruise himself, Shane Deber, uh, father himself is in the house. I probably said that wrong. It's probably Daber because I said Krieger instead of Krager. Um, do you remember who the first person you told you were gonna be a father was, TJ? Do wait, what? Huh? Who Something? was the first person that you told you're gonna be a dad? <sighs> Who was the first person? Um, at the time, I was still pretty close with my mom. So I think my mom was one of the first people I told. Um, it was my mom and my best friend, Jared. Uh, those were those were the first two. And then shortly after, within a week or two, we started, you know, letting everybody know. What about you, Nate? Who would you tell first? My mom. Yeah. Is it just you and your brother or does you, do you have more siblings? Huh? Is it just you and your brother, or do you have more siblings? I don't know. I have more siblings. I have a lot more. A lot more. I have, it's six of us total. Okay. Same. Nice. Look at that. Look at what we have in common. How many siblings do you have, TJ? Two. two yeah, I don't have any sisters, though. They're all boys. I have two sisters. Uh, my oldest sister, Brandy, is same dad, different mom. And my younger sister, Amanda, is same mom, different dad. Shane, how long were you with your partner before you knocked her up, you dirty, horny gnome? Um, guys, I also wanted to talk about a lot of other things. I mean, obviously, we've got a lot of stuff we can bring up, and this is going to be fun. But um, let's see what people think are some of the best Father's Day films to watch, since this is Father's Day Eve. Um, obviously, number 10 we have here, Mrs. Doubtfire. What, 10? You have him at 10? Are you crazy? This is country living of this year, by the way. Ten. Yeah. Why? Uh, That's trash. If if Bill Cosby is ahead of him, I'm going to be extremely mad. What do you guys, is there any particular films you guys like to watch Father's Day? Uh, Not really. Whatever's on TV. I don't, I don't, and the craziest thing is, is like, I've noticed, because I forgot Sunday was even Father's Day. Um, I realized the marketing behind Father's Day. There's not much of it. It's very little marketing behind Father's Day. Mother's Day, on the other hand, is that shit is everywhere you turn. Commercials, ready? Right? It's, it's, it's everywhere. Um, I, I noticed that, and, and I realized how unimportant people feel about fathers, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, we'll get into that. There's a little, little bit of trivia we have involved in that later, for sure. But um, that's a that's a, that's a bullshit rating. Ten? No, it's a bullshit rating. Now, how talk do you feel? I mean, there's a lot of talk about the uh, the trans community 
these days. I mean, is Mrs. Doubtfire where does that where does that fit in your guys' assessment of trans well, community these days? And this, Mrs. Doubtfire, this wasn't a trans thing. This was a father trying to be with his kids thing. He wasn't doing this because he felt like a woman on the inside. No, no, no. He was doing this because he wanted to be with his kids. <clears throat> because the courts are so fucked up that he had to go through these extreme measures to see his kids. At number nine, we have He Got Game. Never saw it. Uh, we'll give it a... It was a good movie. It was, it was a good movie. I've never seen it either. It, it's it's one of those, you know, those black films, you know, father-son thing, making sure your kid does the right thing. This is what uh, Alec Ray, Ray Allen, he was Jesus, Jesus Shuttleworth. What's his name in this movie? Convict who wants to rebuild his relationship with his estranged son, the nation's top basketball recruit, while also trying to convince him to play for the governor's alma mater. If he's successful within one week, his prison his prison sentence will be greatly reduced. But his son will welcome will his son welcome him back into his life? Yeah, it was, it was it was one of those movies. It was a good movie though. It's it's a good movie. Son, if you do this, I'm getting out early. If over the top or real steel is not in this countdown, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> At number eight, we have Mr. Mom. I don't, I, I don't remember this movie. I vaguely remember it. Um, it was a good movie. It wasn't great, but it's not better than Mrs. Doubtfire. Every stay-at-home dad will relate to the plight of Michael Keaton's character in this John Hughes comedy as he takes over the job of caring for his three kids. From dirty diapers to neighborhood drama, this movie has it all. Number seven, The Judge. Never seen it. Never seen it. DJ? Never saw it. Number six, Captain Fantastic, and I'll say I do really enjoy this movie. Never saw that one. Never. I didn't even heard this movie. If you guys get a chance, definitely watch this movie. What the? Who made this list? Eccentric dad Ben Cash, Vigo Mortensen, has lived with his wife. Wow lived with his wife, off the grid, raising their six children. The family follows strict regimens of exercise, education, and food gathering. But when Ben's wife dies, the family is forced to enter the real world. As fish out of water, they encounter situations that challenge each of their beliefs about the world, themselves, and what they want going forward. This film highlights that dads come in all shapes, sizes, and ideologies. And deep down, the most important thing is their love for family. <clears throat> no, I never, never heard that. I've never heard this movie. No, this I mean, is yes, top one. number one's gonna be raising Arizona or some stupid crap like that. So him and his family, they live they basically live out in the woods off the grid, but then the mom dies, and then there's this whole like, well, should we live in town amongst the kids who have internet type thing or not? And are you being the best dad? Are you giving us all the opportunities you could in a modern world or not? And so it's kind of like that struggle, like I'm teaching you survival skills, but you're not learning to live in the modern world type thing, and it's a really good one. Hmm. Number five, the zoo. We bought a zoo. Trash. Next. Number four, onward. Underrated. Okay. Underrated. I thought it was actually pretty good. This is. I, I, this is a, I thought this was a pretty good movie. So you both have seen it. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna check it out. This unconventional Father's Day film follows Elf Brothers as they set out on an epic quest to bring back their long lost father. The funny animated feature from Pixar is for the father figure types we have in our lives that are worth celebrating alongside our biological dads. Yeah. Number three, air. How? What? what? No. How is this a Father's movie? Day movie? No. no. I think they're I think they're thinking that every Father's Day, like this age, is just gonna watch a Michael Jordan movie. How the fuck is this? This not even about dads. It's about fucking Nike. Get who the fuck made this? We need to figure out who made this this list. This list. I'm, is I'm writing an email. This list is trash. This is okay. this this is this is awful. Number two, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume. Oh my two. gosh. Are you serious? Why? Because man, listen. All right. I get. I get it. I get why they said this movie, but at number two. Number two, over Mrs. Doubtfire. This, no. This, 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 wait, wait, Great movie, but no. Number one on Golden Pond. 
What is this? What? What is that like from 1972? So this comes from uh, Leah Hall from Country Leah, Living. Leah, of course, of course, of course. A woman wrote a, a list about Father's Day movies. <laughs> Fucking awesome! That is, you, you, you. What could be better this Father's Day than a movie that gives hope for those of us who may not have the perfect relationship with our dads? Henry Fonda plays the cantankerous Norman who spends his summers at a home on Golden Pond. His estranged daughter chooses to stay with her family to mend her relationship with her father before it's too late. This is the problem. Women writing stuff about men, okay? That shit... That was an awful list. That was a terrible, terrible list. That list no, was garbage. No real steel. No ghost dad? No, no ghost... You guys, shush. No uh, over the top. No nothing. Seriously? Come on, man. So guys... I also thought real quick, I'd bring up some prominent dads in history. Do you guys Major want to see that? What about Dr. Doolittle? Are we there yet? Prominent dads? Yeah, are we there yet? Are we there yet too? What the fuck, man? I'm a little irritated right now. <laughs> that, this was awful. Who the fuck is this guy? So did you know that according to uh, many historical Come people, on. oh, we lost TJ. But according to many historical facts, Nate, one in 200 men alive today can trace their DNA back to Genghis Khan because he raped so many women. (laughs) I don't know if you knew that. No, but that's probably some information I could have went my entire life without knowing. I think I'm going to have to re-invite TJ here. (laughs) Jesus Christ. You said one in two hundred out of two hundred men. One in two hundred. That's a lot. That's this a lot. Of, there's what I, seven billion people on this world in this world. Yeah. You said one out of every two hundred man. Trace their DNA to Genghis Khan. That is a lot. And I'm assuming most of them are probably gonna be Asian descent. <laughs> why would you say that? Don't do that. You know why? Oh. He's back. He's yeah. the goddamn Mongolians. I, I was messing with my mouse and I clicked out of the thing. Don't mess with your mouse, man. It's got sticky stuff on it. D Day, did you hear our fact about Genghis Khan? No. One in 200 men alive today can trace their DNA back to Genghis Khan because he raped so many women. I don't know if that's something I'd be proud of. It's not. That's a mm. lot. That's that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of raping. Okay. It's a lot. It's a lot of it's a lot of unnecessary violence. Let's see here. Some other prominent I'm so irritated about that list. I'm extremely irritated about that list. Here's another prominent father in history. Robert Kardashian. I don't know if you guys know this, but if without Robert Kardashian, not only would we not have the show of the Kardashians. A very famous football player may have been put away for murder. He should have been shot. Because he left uh, left us a fucking plague. His daughter had one heck of a comeback, though. His goddamn kids and fucking OJ. We all know OJ did it. Everybody know OJ did it. We would like to salute you for your service, Robert Kardashian. No, no, the hell we wouldn't. My voice just cracked. Michael Jackson, salute to you as a father, Michael Jackson. Listen, we all make mistakes as fathers. This just so happened to be one of his mistakes. He didn't have the greatest father growing up, so he had to learn how to be a dad on the fly. Okay, Along with all the other traumatic and mental issues he was having, he had to learn how to be a decent father. Okay? Just saying. Well, he also had a movie. From what I understand, he didn't have the best father himself. No, Joe Jackson. He got beat most of his life, so he ain't had the he ain't had the greatest father growing up. So he might as well had Ike Turner. Exactly, exactly. But hey, you know we all make mistakes as fathers. You know the worst. You know the worst thing he could have done is he could have actually dropped the baby. But hey, that child is now a full grown adult. 
Corey Feldman loves Michael Jackson, and apparently he claims that among the many people who had their way with him as a, a young man, Michael Jackson was the only one that did not. I'm not touching that one. I'm not doing it. Nope. Next. Caitlyn Jenner, a famous father in history and one that we would like to salute service to. One of the greatest women ever in history. Woman of the Year, uh, I believe 2019, 2018. Yeah, somewhere around there. And also, you know, you, you know how bad you got to be to lose to a man in an all women's competition? You know how fucking awful you got to be as a woman? But hey, it's inclusive. So, guys, those are just a few famous fathers in history I wanted to bring up. <laughs> it is the Father's Day. Of course, you, you did. <laughs> <laughs> you picked the worst fathers in history to put on this list. Well, since we did those, I figured since I we brought up a lot of famous fathers. Oh, there's one last father I didn't bring up, guys. Sorry. Robert Maxwell. Who? Some people say um, one of the most important people in regards to Israel's independence back in the 40s. And... Uh, Famous Jew, you know, buried in the Mount, the Mount of Olives among many prominent Jews. And without Robert Maxwell, who knows the fate of Israel today? And we certainly would not have Ghislaine Maxwell and uh, the other oh, children. Oh, you son of a bitch. Uh, and the other children of Robert you Maxwell. Suck. What the <laughs> fuck, Dylan? I'm just saying, look, you got Ghislaine right there. What? Uh, the very fuck? proud next to her father. I, I think that was a turning point in her life when he passed away very suspiciously. Dylan, don't you have some questions that we need to have answered or something? Why, Dylan? What is wrong with you, Dylan? <laughs> You're gonna have Nate. I thought have you were positive. I thought you put up a positive role mind and you bring this bullshit up. I mean, in Israel, they love this guy. <clears throat> you keep bringing up people who left us a plague on this planet. Now, I did want to bring up a few people since uh, since I brought up famous, prominent fathers. There are some very famous people, some very prominent people, males in history, who were not fathers. And I thought it was important to highlight them as well. So hey, let's bring up the first one. Uh, who do you guys think it is? My first prominent non-father in history. What's the clue? Extremely famous. Uh, extremely That's famous. That's anybody. Nowadays. Whoop, Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth. From what I have gathered about this guy, I, I've looked all over the internet. I think Wikipedia is down right now. <laughs> I'm not doing this shit with you. I'm so not doing every, this shit with you right from now. Everything that I could find about this guy, and I'm just I'm not. This no, guy. I'm not doing this with you. I'm this guy absolutely... is, uh, some would say, responsible for an entire religion, oh, uh, worshipped the world over by many, and yet. Not a father. In fact, his own birth was, um, I guess, miraculous in itself, and that he was not fathered by anyone but uh, a deity, maybe. I'm not. I... So, our first very prominent non father in history, uh, Jesus of Nazareth. Welcome to the train wreck. Him. What the fuck, man? Um, our second very famous non father in history. Santa Claus. Yeah, from what I could tell, right, this guy is loved the world over. A lot of people view him as a bringer of gifts and joy, uh, particularly once a year. But from everything I could find about this guy, not a father. I could not do this with this man to this, this morning. It's too early for this shit. Married for uh, millennia now, like years and years, he's been with the same woman, Mrs. Claus. I don't think he's ever been unfaithful. No previous ex-wives, no mistresses. This man. Um, a lot of tiny people, you know, elves as they call them around the North Pole. But did, do you guys know any children from Santa Claus? No. Okay. Father time. All right, so I, got, I got one more, one more famous non-father to bring up to you guys, and I just want you guys to really think hard about this one. A very famous, prominent male in history that was famously not a father. Gandhi. This is gonna be something. 
can't do this. It's, it's I'm already, good. I'm already going, I'm already going to this place. But you know what? It is what it is. Uh, what, what is it, TJ? What is it, Dylan? Who is it? The Pope. From everything I could find about this guy, and I looked. What the fuck, man? I looked all over the internet about. I don't know. What are you trying to get us to do? What is? I cannot fucking do it with this man. I cannot. I cannot do this with you today. What the fuck are you doing? So, I just thought you know we're almost on Father's Day, and we've been highlighting some guys who are very prominent father figures in history. But from everything I could find about this guy, you know, he had a wife. Uh, was in love with this woman, a very passionate young relationship they had. I got, this was a passionate guy from everything I read about him. A lot of emotion, a lot of passion, but I didn't read about any children that maybe he passed on. This man is... Have you guys heard of uh, Adolf Hitler is his name? Jesus Christ. Have you guys what ever... Are you trying to get an answer? Is that what it is? That's what this is. You trying to fuck, man? I don't know. I don't know. If you got if you got nothing to add on uh, Adolf what? Hitler, I guess we'll just move what on. What the hell? <laughs> Prominent Ooh. father figure. I'm just trying to do research. I'm trying to add to the show, and you guys have just got oh. nothing. All right. Well, I pineapples. Knew that, I had that new there. There was pineapples. Pineapples. I, pineapples. I knew you had some nefarious. Ideas coming into this. Some told me this wasn't going to be a just straightforward show. I guess I'll just close out the you know, <laughs> close the tabs. Oh, I... you guys want to know a fun fact? <laughs> Why not? We've come this far. <laughs> so, uh, the drinking fountain was invented by Halsley Taylor as a tribute to his father. His father contracted typhoid fever after drinking from a contaminated public water supply in 1896. So thanks to the death of Halsley Taylor's father in 1896 from a contaminated water source, we now have the drinking fountain. I guess that's positive. All right, you guys want some trivia? Let's do some trivia. Sure, why not? I'm going to lie, you guys seem so shooken by it. Just talking about famous fathers and non fathers, you know, there, there, I've said this before on many occasions. There are not, how the hell do you put Hitler and Jesus on the same list? (laughs) Don't say it like that, that's completely out of context. Now, we're (laughs) two people just joined since you said that. Now, they don't know what I'm talking about. (laughs) I didn't put Hitler and Jesus on the same list of like awesome people, Nate. You did, the people just joining in. It's not like I said, my favorite people in history. Jesus and Hitler. Uh, what we were specifically talking about to put it in context was famous non fathers in history. Famous I, is not the word I will use for Hitler. Infamous, maybe. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean tomato tomato. I'm surprised Jeffrey Dahmer wasn't on that list. You're right. Uh, did he not have kids? Should I miss out on that one? And apparently my daughter Samantha Beth is watching, so hello Samantha Beth. Hi, Sam. Oh, my God. Brushing up on your history. All right. <laughs> they, are wanting, they are blowing up my phone right now. They did they you, want us to get to the questions because that's Did you put 18 plus on this, God damn it? Oh, actually, no, I didn't. I should have. TJ, that's a good idea, actually. Let's, let's get to your questions that I sent you the other day. Um, I sent TJ and Nate, but TJ is, uh, you know, the more responsible one, so he actually got responses from his kids. <laughs> I sent TJ a list of questions the other day, a specific list of fun Father's Day questions. And um, he sent them to his kids, and apparently they sent replies. So we will now go over this. Um, a list of fun Father's Day questions from TJ's kids. TJ, take it away. All right. So uh, as Dylan's already said, he gave me a list of questions. And I sent this to Haley, and uh, I told her, I said, you and your sister, Samantha, y'all do this together. Tell me your answers. So the first one is, how old is Daddy. Samantha, my oldest, said I was 40. Haley said I was 37. Okay. Obviously, 37 Correct. is the correct age for anybody wondering. You don't look a day over 52. Eh, well, I feel like. So um, next question is, what is your favorite color? Samantha said maroon, obviously, because my love of Texas A&M. 
Haley says black and blue. She's not wrong because most of my t-shirts I wear are black. And uh, are those I, the bruises you leave on her? Uh, <laughs> when need be. When need be. Yes. Um, how much does Dad weigh? Samantha says seventy-five pounds. Haley says two. At least they're generous. Wow, they're both getting uh, dessert, huh? Right. Right. At least they're generous. Not um, gonna say the true. Not gonna say the true weight. Three hundred. Oh, baby. So probably down 15 pounds, but I guarantee you after our vacation, I probably gained all 15 back because I ate like absolute. On garbage. the dot, like three, zero, zero. Mm -hmm. Damn. Okay. That's tough to do. Um, what does dad do for work? Samantha says work on big machines, heavy equipment. And Haley says models dresses. Both correct. Haley, very uh, 2023 of you. Right. <laughs> What does dad like to do for fun? They both have the same answer. Fish. Big fisherman, huh? Yes. Here's what I got to know. Because I see a lot of fisher videos and I, I want to be a fisherman. I like the idea of fishing. I did it when I was a kid, but I never really like, you know, I would just stick the closed face reel out there and then put it in the bucket and then dad took care of it. Like, do you, what ha re the removal of the hook from the mouth do you just grab the sucker by the mouth or do you sometimes you get bit have you ever been cut i mean what's that process like? i've been cut i've been stabbed i've been stung uh if if you're that worried about it get you a little pair of gardener gloves and you'll be fine yeah but uh, everyone's gonna make fun of me no a lot of fishermen do it um they also have pliers made for and built for getting hooks out of fish's mouths you can pick one up at walmart for like five eight bucks but the most manly thing is to just use your bare hands and grab the, the most manly thing is to grab the hook with your teeth and just yank it out that's you know what that, that's something i loud notice this whole manly thing listen i like my hands okay i'm i i i'm good with my hands i can do a lot of things he's very good with his hands listen I, I prefer not to constantly stick my hand in something that's going to constantly cause it to come out with cuts <laughs> or potentially missing pieces of my fingers. Okay. No, you don't, you don't have to have your hands don't have to look like you've been playing in clay your entire life to be considered man. Okay. So when you fish, you like to wear gloves. Me? I don't yeah. fish. I don't okay. like nature. I'm not a big nature guy. Uh -uh. <laughs> Hunting, I would like to do. I've never, I've never got a chance to do that, but I definitely want to go hunting. You two have never fished together? No. Damn. <clears throat> but I would have hunting is my hunt, hunting was something I would like to do. My dad would. That's one thing my dad would never take us to do because he said he didn't have, he couldn't. What was the word he used? He couldn't look an animal in the eye and shoot it. Me personally, I don't give a fuck. I, I just be a dad hunting trip would be fantastic. Yeah, 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 I got All the right. I got I got the guns to go, so we can, we just need to pack up and go. Well, if we come, if you come down in uh, September, we can go dove hunting. I got a family farm; we go dove hunting every year. Um, next on the list, what is Daddy's favorite food? Uh, Samantha said Mexican food because I'm a sucker for chips and salsa, and we all know my obsession with cheese. And uh, Haley says hot Cheetos, so they're both right. So you're just a snacker. Oh yeah. Uh, favorite shows to watch. Samantha says WWE and Haley says Muppets. And when she's referring to Muppets, I have this, um, uh, I grow when the kids were growing up, I tried like crazy to get them to watch Muppet treasure Island because that was my favorite movie growing up. Didn't happen. I like Muppet Christmas Carol. One of the few Christmas movies I actually really enjoyed. The kids had no interest in it. So there's the Muppets for you. What uh, is your favorite show? You know, I don't really have a favorite anymore. I mean, I, I watch a little bit of wrestling. I, I I was really big into Supernatural for a long time. I was uh, really big you were into, big into Swamp People, weren't you? For a little bit, yeah. I quickly got over it. Now I catch myself watching Dr. Pole a lot. Dr. Who? Dr. Pole, P-O-L. He's that veterinarian on, like, uh, I think it's Animal Planet or uh, National Geographic or something. Mm. He's, a, he, he's a vet veterinarian out of uh michigan i believe so uh what is something dad says a lot samantha says come here i need to talk to you and Haley says i don't want to preach but usually followed by a 30 minute preach you say that was a lot huh yeah 
Um, what is something dad is really good at? Samantha says gaming. Um, she couldn't be more wrong, but I appreciate the compliment. Um, Haley says letting me cry on your shoulder about boys. Aww. You're a better person than I am. I, so speaking of boys, I got to go find an eighth grader now. Oh, no. Because, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, no, it's correct. It's apparently, my daughter has a crush on some eighth grader. Mind you, she's in. She's going into the third grade. So, so <laughs> I got to find some fucking eighth grader and figure out who the fuck he is. Uh, give us some time. He'll turn into a girl. Um, another question here is, uh, what is something dad's not very good at? Samantha says dancing, and she's absolutely right. She didn't get her dan- uh, love for dance for me. Um, and Haley says being patient. And it's funny, I have to say this, because when I first read that, we all know how I am with words and the English language. I thought she said being a parent. So I was like, what? Wait, huh? I had to so look you, at it twice. So not only are you slow, but you're dyslexic at the same time. <laughs> yes. Extremely. They got to be patient with you. <laughs> what is something dad always forgets? Samantha says birthdays. Absolutely. Because I can't remember my own birthday. And uh, Haley says that he has kids in the car. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's happened a couple times. I believe that second one is unlawful, sir. <laughs> right? It is extremely unlawful. Uh, what is? They popped up a specific Chevrolet. Specifically <laughs> has a message on their dashboard for people like you nowadays. Right? Uh, the last question here is, what is your favorite thing to do with dad? Samantha says, listening to Roger. Roger Craig, of course. And then Haley says, riding the motorcycle. How many times have they been have they been on the motorcycle with you? Uh, we haven't been recently. Uh, Haley's been probably ten or fifteen times. Samantha's probably been about four or five. Uh, Haley was to a point at one time where she would ride every time we, she came over, but I had the bike worked on, and it's just been too hot. And I don't ride near as much as I used to, so haven't really got to do that a lot. But we're gonna change that. You guys want to check out some dads, celebrity dads who had children over 50? Have you heard about a guy named Al Pacino? I can see that. Yeah, I knew right. this was coming. Al Pacino is 83. And he, his, what, how old is she? 29 year old girlfriend is pregnant right now. Hood. You got, how desperate of a bitch you have to be to want. Hey, he's 83. 83. You, How does that you, work? You knowingly slept with someone's grandfather. He's yeah, the, male, the male sperm is amazing. He's 29. What the grandfather? Fuck? Great-grandfather. I mean, sperm versus eggs. Sperm wins every time. Those eggs like, go spoiled quick. He's 83. Like, how desperate of a human being are you... Pacino is also father to 22-year-old twins Anton and Olivia with Beverly D'Angelo. Anton? Anton. Uh, Robert De Niro, 79. I hate this shitty human being. He's a shitty human being. I don't like him. And that's the birth of his seventh child. Seventh? 51-year gap between De Niro's oldest child and his youngest. What the fuck? Set up franchises. Mick Jagger at 73. Ew, Jesus. <laughs> uh, welcomed his eighth child uh, in 2016 at the age of 73. Again, I don't understand it. What is wrong with these women? Richard Gere was 70 when he had his latest child. <clears throat> 2000. Jesus. George Lucas was 69, Mr. Star Wars. I mean, 70, maybe 60. Uh, it's getting younger. Him and his kid are both going to be in diapers. <clears throat> Pretty, Pretty much. 68. <clears throat> I, I, you got, it has to be money. It has to be money. It has to be. Oh, boy. Look at that. Rod's, damn, Whew. some people just age awful. Alec Baldwin, 64. How about that for a family? Well, he doesn't shoot blanks. We know that. I mean, 64, 64 is still at that youthful age. Eight children. Is it, is, is, is it with his wife? See, that's how you know you have a lot of kids. You just start naming them after where you conceived them. Ireland. What the fuck? 
Jeff Goldblum was 62. I couldn't. I'm sorry. Well, at that age, I couldn't. Life the, the finds sleep, a way. The I'm, sleep I'm yelling at kids. I'm yelling at kids to get off my lawn at 62. The sleep schedule, the I couldn't do it. The, not at that age. I don't even want to have another one now because I don't. Mm -mm. Bruce Willis has five daughters. Rumor is a really interesting name for your daughter, too. Rumor? Yeah. So, yeah. That's the that's the parents parents.com list of celebrities over 50. At, at some point I'm looking at it like no, I'm good. I'm done. Like, I, at this point I don't even know if I, I don't want another child to be honest. Like it's just too much. Like you talking about at the age of 70 having to get up in the middle of, two and three times in the middle of the night. Well, I guess if, I mean I guess if you got someone else taking care of your kids it's easy. Yeah. I think that, yeah, I couldn't. Yeah, hell no, fuck that. If you, if I, find, if I'm seventy and you say you're pregnant, I'm pushing you down the flight of stairs. That's not happening at all. No, you, no, we're not doing this. This is what we're not doing. I can't even believe you have the energy at that age to uh, compete. Know. Right, exactly. Especially as bad as some of them look. Like, how do you have the energy? Guys, let's let's do some uh, fantastic Father's Day trivia we have here. Um, TJ, we'll start off this number one question with you here. What is the most popular gift to give a dad on Father's Day? I'm going to say either a tie or a watch, and if it's not one of those, it's got to be socks. You are absolutely correct. A necktie is the answer to this question. That's because it's, it's cheap and it's easy. You bastards! Fun that's fact: they, that's the only thing they promote in, the, in these damn commercials is ties and underwear. Bitch, I want a diamond ring too. Yeah, when I looked up like the activities to do with dad on Father's Day versus the activities to do with mom on Mother's Day, it was like, oh, play Jenga with dad. And with mom, it was like, play the quiet game. Hey, bitch, I want, I want to go out to eat. I want to take me to a restaurant. I want to go to Outback. Oh, mom game. The fuck? Uh, Nate, what do you think the average age of first-time fathers in America today is? In America today? Are we talking about like, like in 2023? I think so, yes. Uh, I'm going to say somewhere around 23 or 24, somewhere in that age range. I have here 30.9. 30.9. Yes. We're getting older. Well, I guess, I guess, yeah, I guess because people are, they're, I mean, they're more promiscuous as ever, but they're not having kids as much. I think financially, too. Like, it's just forcing people to wait, like, once you have yeah, a house. And they're things too expensive. Like yeah. I went to Raising Cane's yesterday and spent $16. Like, fuck that. Uh, <laughs> Just for days. myself. Father's Day is the fourth largest holiday for sending cards, according to Hallmark. What three holidays are ahead of it? Uh, Christmas. Yep. Um, let's see. I'll say 4th of July just because it's my favorite. Wrong. Okay. Thanksgiving? Nope. Easter? No. Come on, man. You're missing one. It's there. Juneteenth? <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> President's Day. No. Mother's Day, fool. Mother's Day is one. And the last one? Uh, Martin Luther Holiday? King Day. Columbus Day. What other fucking holiday do you sing cards? I saw the Christmas, Mother's Day. What happens in February? Ah, oh, fucking Valentine's. That's not a fucking holiday. Uh, that's, that's a scam. That's not a fucking <laughs> holiday. So Mother's Day and Valentine's Day, which are basically the same day, uh, are the number two cards. Uh Nay, a recent survey revealed that dads actually want this one thing the most on Valentine or a Father's yeah on Father's Day. It's what they want. The one thing they want the most from their kids on Father's Day. Ah, peace and quiet. Shut the fuck up. You got a guess, TJ? Uh, to watch the Golf Channel and take a nap. <laughs> A phone call. A phone, what the fuck? 
Leave me alone. Give me the same treatment you give your mom. Shut the fuck up and leave me alone. Um, how about this one? TJ, who is the father of the U.S. Constitution? The, the fuck? Dylan, where did you get this question from? Ben Franklin? Nate, who you got to guess? I want to say James Madison, but I don't think that's correct. You want to say correct, sir. Is it? It is James Madison. I forget. Uh, between the two of you, do you know who the, who is known as the father of invention? No idea. No, was it Benjamin Franklin? No, was it Benjamin Franklin? Thomas Edison. Edison. Oh, that fucker! He needed the light bulb. I forgot. Uh, who is known as the father of modern modern communism? <laughs> no, you son of a bitch! <laughs> I knew you were going to send one of these. These goddamn cancel questions in here. It's just who's the father of modern communism? Any guesses? Karl Marx. <clears throat> you suck. Uh, Nate, which marine animal father is the one to become pregnant and give birth to children? Seahorse. Yeah, it's a seahorse. Thank you, Nate. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, TJ, smarty pants, which type of fish father will keep the eggs of his children in his mouth until they hatch? Just because it's fun to say, I'm going to say sperm whale. It is the catfish. Oh. And whales are mammals, so that's not even fun to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nate, what U.S. president made Father's Day a permanent holiday in 1972? I couldn't tell you that one. Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the president in 1972? Oh, that's a question. Barack Obama. Was it Ronald Reagan? Richard Nixon. Ah, Richard Nixon. Uh, TJ, true or false? There are estimated to be over 300,000 stay-at-home dads in America. Um, what were my options? True or false? Maybe. True. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a big number. I'll say true. That would no. Nah, that's a big number. It so is in fact false. Yeah, I can't. That's a big big ass. Most men do most of the working, so I don't. I don't. Oh, uh, that true. Supposedly, there are about 215,000. 215,000? Which is kind of crazy. I mean, that seems like a tiny-ass number when you consider all the men in America, boys. Right. No shame in your game. So, so what the fuck am I doing? I'm doing something wrong. I need to be a stay-at-home dad. Uh, true or false, Nate, Mother's Day was a national holiday before Father's Day. I believe it. True. Uh, Mother's <laughs> I Day fucking believe it. 1914. <laughs> I fucking believe it. <laughs> Uh, TJ, 75% of Father's Day cards are given to fathers by their children. True. False. That's 50%. <laughs> uh, Nate, one in three homes, true or false, in America do not have a father. That's one in three homes? Yes. I'm going to say true. Well, no. That is true. Because yeah, it sounds about right. TJ, uh, true or false, chromosomes from the father determine the sex of their children. Ah, uh, true. That's easy. That's biology, buddy. That is true. Uh, Nate, true or false? Fathers over the age of forty are significantly less likely to have sons. That's a weird. That's a weird statement. You can't. That's false. That's a weird that statement. They're I less can't. likely to have sons. It is true. How the fuck? Is, who came up? I need to see the science behind that. Uh, Nate. Or, I mean, TJ, excuse me, on Married with Children, what was Al Bundy's job? Shoe salesman. Correct. He Look at that. Goddamn, we got a ding, ding, ding in the house. He's the best goddamn shoe salesman in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Nate, this father and son were the first to play on the same Major League Baseball team at the same time. Uh, fucking baseball? I don't know. I did. Uh, uh, King Griffey? Yes, yes. 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 It is, in fact, Ken Griffey Jr. and Ken Griffey Sr. And then finally, either one of you, uh, Tom Selleck, Steve Gutenberg, and Ted Danson star in this movie where a baby is left at the doorstep and they try to adjust to fatherhood. Is it two, is it two men and a baby? Two men and a baby? Three men and a baby? Some well, there's three of them, so it is, in fact, three men and a baby. Ding, 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 ding. All right, guys, you made it through all the trivia questions. How about that? 
I like how I listed three guys and TJ said two men and a baby. <laughs> You're right. I did. <laughs> guys, did you have anything you want to add here? I think we had a hell of a show. I did. I want to add something and uh, kind of a heartfelt message. Um, first and <clears throat> foremost, Dylan, thank you for putting this together. Absolutely. Uh, I know it's been, uh, w- we have since spoken and hung out and done a few shows for mostly football. And I think we even did, if I'm not mistaken, a dress casual with you, Dylan, yep. uh, since uh, Just Be a Dad ended. And I, I, I know it seems like it was kind of abrupt. And I want to say these two guys here, both Dylan and Nate, it was not their doing. It was mine. Um, I kind of just fell out of love with podcasting and it was just, it wasn't anything they did or anything anybody did. It was just life was getting the better of me. I was stuck at a job I didn't like. I was stressed at home. It was money. It was bills. It was just everyday life was getting the better of me. Um, And that time in this past year, I have learned a lot about myself. I have learned a lot about being a dad, I've learned a lot about being a friend. I'm not the best at it at times. I'm not the worst at it at times either. But, um, you know, it's it, it's great to be back here and to hang out with you guys. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say is simply this, is being a dad is probably one of the hardest jobs you can do. Number one, you don't get paid to do it. It's one of those things that you have to show up day in and day out, whether you want to or not. You're going to have days where you feel like absolute nonsense and absolute crap, and you just don't want to deal with anybody. And yet, at the end of the day, our kids are what get us through. Um, So, and I know I'm going to get some hate for this, but whether you're a single dad, a single parent, a single mom, a single grandparent, whatever the case may be, if you can see this message behind me, don't give up. Um, things get worse before they get better. I know that seems like a cliche of a thing to say, but it is, everybody's going through rough times. It gets better. I promise. But, uh, with all that being said, thank you. And hopefully we can do this again soon. That's all I'm going to say. I couldn't agree more. You know, the, the reaction to this was very nice. You know, the response to this was very nice. As soon as I posted about it, People were excited. Like I said, um, I mean, Rapid Dave even brought it up on Strikeout Beer, how much he would like to see a reunion of Just Be a Dad because, you know, this day and age, especially after the pandemic, kind of shook things up as far as the way we all connect with each other and associate with each other and the way society, you know, kind of tells you that this way of living is toxic or this way of talking is wrong or this way of doing it is wrong, like, It's hard to just like be, it's not hard to, the concept of just being a bro anymore is like, it almost feels like niche. It almost feels like you have to go to like the dark corners of the internet to just like hang out with dudes where you can say things that are just outrageous and stupid and you don't mean it, but you say it to be funny. And just the idea that you can just have a a free idea of like um, speech and thinking and a way of talking where you can say something stupid and you're not like held completely accountable. Like I'm going to have you fired. People shouldn't talk to you. People shouldn't associate with you because you disagree about COVID or you disagree about um, the way we should handle ourselves as far as our sexual orientation. You disagree about like people, you know, there's a, there's a podcast that recently stopped um, doing episodes. It's called stoner dads that I was subscribed to. And people are boned about that because it's just like, I understand like as a guy, not many people are going to sympathize with the idea of like, oh, you just want to be an idiot and be a dude or whatever. But like, I don't know I, if you know what I'm talking about. If you, if you feel lost, if you feel like you don't have the same connection with your friends or your boys or your bros, or even if you're a woman and you feel like people are just too soft anymore. No men are talking like men anymore. No people are just free to be silly and express their ideas like that's what just be a dad was definitely a part of toward the end and that's definitely uh, what i think a lot of podcasts want to be and a lot of people listening want to be a part of and join the chat and say things that are just ridiculous and absurd and stupid and be a part of a big silly group and it's harder and harder these days because you have to be you you're, you're everything about you is online now 
So if, if you have a job that you feel very tied to and connected to, and you don't want to lose that job, you, you censor yourself and you say things that maybe you don't agree with, or you, or you say less things that you agree with, and you try to be um, very isolated and you don't share your opinions or expressions as much. So having a show like Just Be a Dad, having a show like Stoner Dads, having a show like Legion of Skanks, I'm just going to throw it out there. A lot of other shows that I watch, you know, the Joe Rogan podcast, if I'm being a total, you know, mainstream podcast guy, that, I don't know. Having these different shows and places and things that you can associate with and agree with and not feel like, oh, people are going to call me racist or sexist or homophobic or xenophobic if I make a joke. Like having those spaces are huge because that's what I remember as a kid growing up. I remember, you know, the, uh, the Power Rangers. How ridiculous was that? That the yellow Power Ranger was Asian and the black Power Ranger was black. And how ridiculous was the WWE that the Iron Sheik was some stupid Middle Eastern character and the Russian characters and the blackface characters and Stone Cold and all the shit that would offend people and the, the Godfather with the hoe train and the Val Venus and the stuff that we just learned to grow up with and identify as entertainment and theater and stuff that you could put in a compartment and say, this is who I can be when I'm being Mr. Silly time. And this is who I can be when it's time to be a professional and not, you know, and deal with other people. Like the idea that you can have two different worlds and not be isolated to constantly being in this. I'm always watching what I'm saying, always watching what I do, because God forbid, if I'm, if I'm 16 now and I say something stupid and it affects my scholarship a year from now, like these kids are scared to death of being themselves and being caught on camera these days and TikTok and Instagram and things like that. And, all of the the suicide numbers you see of young girls these days on Instagram because they don't feel like they're living the life they want to. And they don't feel like they're getting the attention or yada, yada, yada. And it's just, that's why it's a whole spiel. And it's a lot to say that shows like this, as stupid as it may seem, where we can just say things and we're not going to hold each other like, oh, I can't believe you said that because we know where we're coming from. It's from a place of love. We're trying to make each other laugh. We're trying to be absurd and stupid and silly. And it's very important to have these spaces. So um, a long way to say, TJ, you're totally right. And thank you and thank Nate for initially coming up with the idea for Just Be a Pot or Just Be a Dad because it was huge. And a lot of people miss it. And I think shows like this, again, comedy podcasts and things where you don't have to be so serious and you can be yourself, uh, they're big. Well, I'm, I'm, I want to say this and I'm going to throw a little teaser out there. Um, and we'll talk more about this later, guys. But um, to anybody that was a fan of the show, and I said this during the post, whether you watched one episode for five minutes or whether you watched every episode the entire way through, stay tuned. That's all I'm going to say. Stay tuned. I like it. I like it. And you know what? As far as uh, mostly football goes, Nate, we got to talk about Deion Sanders possibly losing his foot potentially soon. There's a lot to talk about there. We do. We have a few things lined up with mostly football. We're going to do some mock drafts with um, Rapid David Allen. I have a few, two of my buddies also we're going to line up in July. We're going to do mock drafts with. So, again, you know, I'll just reinforce. I'll say it again. Seek out the silly stuff. Seek out places like Just Be a Dad, Strike Out Beer, um, the podcast that you like, that you, that you feel yourself. You can be yourself and those people express the ideas that you're a part of, you know, um, identity it's 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 a it's a big part of culture today because authenticity and actually being yourself is very rare people just want to you know do whatever is going to get the most views and get the most advertisements and i feel like the amount of things you're allowed to say anymore is just getting more and more isolated and narrowed down so seeking out outlets like this where you can truly be yourself is important so Again, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, thank you all for another fantastic episode of Dress Casual. Look out for Just Be a Dad and uh, Mostly Football. And happy Father's Day, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>